Um, regarding the agenda today, we'll run through uh, roughly 20 courses, which is actually only a fraction of the offerings that the department has. But we've chosen some of the most popular ones to share with you today, such as system, learning and theory, data science, electrical engineering, and graphics classes. And following these presentations, we'll have um, question and answer breakout rooms where we'll be happy to field questions for you all. And I'll let my co-chair, Tim, take it away now. Thanks, Valerie. Um, first up, we have the systems classes, which all can fulfill the design course requirement for CS and EECS majors. Uh, these courses generally have a major design component, which involves understanding and tweaking with the design of uh, systems in great depth. So first up, we have Animesh, who will be presenting on CS 152. So CS 152 is the foundations of computer architecture, and it focuses on performance programming, compilers, operating systems, as well as computer architecture and engineering. The goal of this class is to help you understand how software interacts with the hardware. It bridges the layer between the code that you write and the actual hardware your code runs on. The most important part of this class is five lab assignments that use real processor designs and the same tools used in computer architecture research. On top of that, this class is taught by professors who are at the forefront of their field. For the past three years, it's been taught by Professor Kirste Asinovich, who invented RISC-V, which is the foundation for 99% of all new processors created today. On top of that, it features guest lectures from prominent companies. Apple comes in four times a semester to give guest lectures and talk about Apple CPU design, as well as the innovations they're making in the hardware space. On top of that, they provide free AirPods for students who do particularly well on lab assignments in order to encourage people to get more into computer architecture research. I can't emphasize enough how much the experience in this class helps you with industry. It uses the same tools that Apple and Google use to design their machine learning accelerators. On top of that, the professors and the graduate students who teach the class are the ones designing these tools. So you're getting firsthand access to the people who are actively involved in pushing computer architecture research forward. Cool, so yeah, now I'm gonna talk about CS161, which is computer security. So this class is um, a really highly practical course as well that equips students with the tools and knowledge necessary to recognize security vulnerabilities in software, um, as well as understand um, your state-of-the-art cybersecurity protocols um, that keep us all safe today. So this class will give you a lot of practical preparation for industry software development, um, and will also provide a strong foundation for pursuing research in computer security, if you're interested in that. Um, so throughout this class, you'll learn about computer security all throughout the stack. So you'll start from as low level as like assembly language, um, to full-scale web applications. And most of that is done through the three projects where you gain hands-on experience, both attacking and defending against cyber attacks. So first project, um, you're gonna write some scripts that, can, that will exploit vulnerable C code. Um, then in project two, you'll be able to design and implement um, a secure file sharing system. So you can think Dropbox, but end-to-end um, -end encrypted. And then project three, um, you'll be attacking and gaining admin access uh, on an insecure web server. Um, so yeah, just an over brief overview of some of the concepts that you'll learn um, through this class. Um, we'll start off with general security principles, um, move on to lower level memory safety, um, then the more mathy cryptography, um, and then end uh, off the course uh, with web and networking security. Cool, yeah, I'll pass it off to the next presenter. Thanks, Lauren. Uh, moving on to CS162, what we have here is the operating systems course at Cal, uh, often regarded as a must-take course. Um, in this course, you will design and build an operating system pretty much from scratch. Uh, you'll be implementing key components of an operating system according to your uh, own design specifications. So first of all, the course does a very deep dive into highly relevant concepts, which can benefit how you'll approach problems in the real world. You'll learn how to concretely, how concretely your computer works, including concepts like scheduling, uh, threads and processes, file systems, and distributed architectures. The course itself is extremely project heavy. So you'll work in teams and it's actually one of the few courses where your team's planning makes an immense difference on how well you'll do. So you'll be reading up on the skeleton code and writing up a proper design. And arguably these may be more important and potentially easier than writing the code itself, although both are very difficult. 
uh, you may also find yourself designing a component uh, like for a week before actually implementing it in code. Um, lastly, you'll learn about the modern uh, concurrency and synchronization uh, aspects in C. Uh, I have very little experience in C prior to taking this class, so I didn't have the easiest time but it might help if you have some familiarity prior to starting. Some of the synchronization primitives you'll encounter include locks, uh, semaphores, and condition variables. All in all, it's a fantastic class, my favorite upper division course at Cal, and I highly recommend it. Okay, um, CS186 is the database systems class, and you get to learn about databases from the top down. So usually you start off the semester learning about SQL, which many of you may or may not have heard about. Um, you basic, which is like basically you specify in code the information you want from the database and then it gives it to you. And then after that, you'll get into how databases are represented, what kind of data structures and design goes into them, how to make certain operations efficient and also correct. And then you'll learn about how databases and the information in them are stored and organized. And how to retrieve information efficiently, and that involves understanding some concepts related to operating systems. Um, so the overarching goal of CS186 is to learn how to develop systems to efficiently manage, maintain process and query, uh, and make generally make sense of data. Thanks, Valerie. Uh, up next, we have the machine learning and theory classes, which are some of the most popular, cor uh, popular courses. And they're often quite theory heavy and uh, grounded in mathematics. Uh, first up, we have Brian, who will be presenting on CS170. Along with, along with CS162, CS170 efficient algorithms and tractable processes is usually regarded as one of the most important courses uh, to take as a CS major. So what do you learn there? You get to learn cool terminologies like big O complexity. You get to learn cool other cool terminologies like MP hard and really be able to impress your friends. But beyond impressing your friends, you get to learn a lot more than just algorithms and words that are going to help you throughout your, uh, your CS career. You're going to learn about the way that people who have designed these things uh, that basically pervades our computers today think about when they approach different problems. In addition, you get to learn about acing the hardest job interviews. So job interviews at Google, job interviews at Facebook will become easy for you once you've taken this course. Maybe not easy, but it will become easy conceptually after taking this course. At the end, you get to compete with your classmates in a coding project at the end of the course. So if you're interested in theory, if you're interested in thinking like a computer scientist, this is a course you should take. Okay, and at the same time, I have a course on deep learning. Artificial intelligence uh, is something that I personally came to Cal with, uh, with a big expectation for. And what I learned at Cal is that one of the things that, or the most important thing that pervades uh, artificial intelligence today is this technology, is this piece of technology called deep learning. And in this course, unlike other courses that you learn at other universities or even at Cal, um, most of the courses there will teach you techniques that were developed back in the 1900s. Here, we talk about technologies that were developed in the past decades. Um, like literally technologies, uh, one of the most recent things that we discussed is something that was developed in 2020. So this is completely new, it's at the front of everyone and it's going to get you real life exposure to what it's like to build Google's search engine, what it's like to build Facebook's uh, face uh, recognition algorithms, what it's like to build and beat the best Go and Dota players in the world. Uh, CS188 is the artificial intelligence class and it's basically an introduction to AI through Pac-Man projects. Um, in this class, you'll learn a lot of the math and logic behind popular AI algorithms and then implement them through code. And then many algorithms solve different problems. So you'll create a whole smorgasbord of different game solvers, usually involving Pac-Man. And there's also a light selection of machine learning topics at the end of the semester, like decision trees and neural nets. Um, and CS188 is in general, one of the most popular upper division classes. Um, most Cal students take it and it's taught by really excellent professors. Now let's move on to CS189. This is the machine learning class. 
this is by far the most important course if you want to get into AI slash machine uh, ML related work. You get to learn the algorithms, mathematical foundations, and implementations behind a whole host of machine learning techniques. Um, some of the uh, things that we cover are classification, regression, clustering, neural networks, dimensionality reduction, and like estimation. So there's a lot to learn. Every week is something new. And um, overall, it's a really fun class. Sognik, we'll talk more about it right now. Yeah, and this, this course is usually offered in a couple different formats. Um, one of the formats that is offered in is kind of project heavy. So you get to write your own decision tree algorithm. You get to write your own neural networks package. So something like, you know, TensorFlow or PyTorch, you implement like parts of a package like that. And also this is, this course also really builds your mathematical foundations for getting into machine learning research. And it's usually regarded as the gateway course into machine learning research at UC Berkeley. And, you know, if you want to take um, grad level courses in computer vision, natural language processing, and uh, reinforcement learning, then this course will be a prerequisite for that. And depending on the professor who's teaching it, you may need an optimization or probability prerequisite course before taking this. And you can always ask me questions after this. Thanks, Agnika and Prakash. Um, up next, we have the data science courses, which are more new, but also uh, interesting and concentrate uh, heavily on the analysis and manipulation of data. Uh, first up, we have Kunal who will be presenting on data uh, 100. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, so data 100 is the first upper division course for the data science. Uh, major and it's very popular among both data science majors and computer science majors and the first half of the course details on how to analyze data so exploring the data visualizing the data and we teach different packages like pandas numpy matplotlib seaborn and many other packages and to help you to actually visualize and understand the data and the second half of the course builds on the modeling aspect so sort of like basic machine learning uh, concepts like linear regression, logistic regression, uh, decision trees, clustering, and uh, dimensionality reduction as well. So uh, it's definitely a very interesting course. Um, this is a very popular course and not only computer science and data science, but across different majors, across biology, across English majors take this class. There's many different people who take this class and it's definitely a very interesting course. Now let's move on to Data 102. This is a really new course um, offered. It, it started being offered just like a couple of years ago. It's created by Professor Michael Jordan, who's uh, referred to as like the Michael Jordan of statistics. And uh, it's a mix of a whole lot of concepts. It's a mix of ML, AI, deep learning, and a lot of statistics concepts. In terms of the work you'd be doing in this course, there's a weekly lab and problem set, and there's also a final group project that everyone gets to do along with a couple of midterms. Uh, to summarize what the goal of Data 102 is, is to bring graduate level ideas and statistics to the undergraduate level where it's accessible to anyone who wants to take it. Um, we have prerequisites of a linear algebra course, upper division probability course, and Data 100, which we all just talked about. And there's a, not, there's a huge emphasis on just covering a lot of topics. So there's, this is definitely more ty uh, type of a breadth course and applying those topics in a real world setting. It's really applicable because we get to work with uh, the latest data, like for example, doing COVID meta-analysis. Um, and uh, we also get to explore some of the most, um, some of the newest uh, topics in data science. So for example, game theory and matching markets along with uh, interpretability concepts, NRL. So it's really a cool course to try out. Thanks, Prakash. Uh, up next, we have the electrical engineering courses, which range a little bit in topic, but generally focus a bit more on the hardware and uh, component aspects. First up, we have Jay, who will be presenting on robotics. Hi, uh, so X106A is our intro to robotics course, and it is my favorite course at Berkeley. Uh, the lecture content of the course focus on, focuses on teaching the math behind modeling robot arms and general movement, movement in 3D space. 
Uh, the course also surveys other topics in robotics, like uh, computer vision, control, and planning. So you, students get kind of like a wide overview of robotics as a field. In lab, you get to play around with real robots and get them to do various fun tasks, like picking up a block and scanning a room and making a map. Um, and the class has a large final project component where uh, you get to do pretty much whatever you want. And students tend to leave the class with a final project that they can add to their resume and also talk about in interviews. Uh, next, I'll be talking about uh, EE 120, 123, and 128. So these are three classes that all fall under this umbrella of signals and systems. Um, where a signal is kind of anything that's a data stream, like audio, image, or video, and a system is anything that kind of interacts with a signal. So you'll learn about designing systems that interact with signals in meaningful ways. And that could be like analyzing data and trying to extract meetings. So that's more about signal processing. Um, and systems that do that, they may be familiar with are like Photoshop, Shazam, and like MRI even. Um, so uh, EE120 touches on this, uh, but the follow-up course EE123 goes in more detail and you get to do fun things like tracking planes that are flying around. Um, and EE120 also touches on controls, uh, which is like the design of systems that respond to data in meaningful ways. So that's like robotics or autonomous cars, uh, more classical AI, and even things like biochemical reactions, like your body is constantly regulating itself. Um, and the follow-up course for that is EE128, where you get to design a self-balancing inverted pendulum, which is shown in the GIF over there. And yeah, these are pretty neat courses that are foundational to everything going on in uh, electrical engineering, pretty much. And I highly recommend. All right, now let's move on to EX126. This course is all about probability and random processes. So here we get to learn the theory and applications of probability. This is an upper division probability course, meaning you need a lower division probability course as a prerequisite to it. Most people take CS70 right before taking this course. Uh, and this course itself is also a prerequisite for lots of peaks fields if you wanna go into research or just um, uh, like higher level coursework. For, for example, for AI, machine learning, uh, theory and information theory. In terms of the work in this class, you'll be doing a weekly problem set and a weekly lab and then a couple of midterms. Um, along with the final. And uh, this course also helps you ace probability interviews for quant style jobs. So any interview that asks you to get good at probability and also a bit of statistics, um, you'll be good to go after taking this class. We cover classic probability like a, stat, uh, like a statistics upper division course, but we dive into applications right away. As soon as the topic is introduced, uh, your problem set is gonna test you on the theory behind it, but then your lab is gonna um, get you to do some really cool stuff. So for example, stuff you'll be learning is gonna be digital communication, uh, Markov chains, um, Poisson processes and estimation and like a whole lot of cool stuff. So check this out in the breakout room. Hi guys, so today we'll be talking about 127. So 127 is the optimization models class at Berkeley. And so the way it works is essentially it starts off with a primary emphasis on linear algebra. And one of the important prereqs for this class is EE16B, which covers the SVD and a lot of other principal linear algebra ideas. And we start off with linear algebra as a method of optimization and use it in other engineering applications. And then we move on to learning about types of problems that we see in, in, in optimization. These include linear programs, quadratic pro programs, quadratic constraint quadratic programs, and many more as well. Um, and one of them is actually on the bottom right here on the screen. Um, and in terms of what this class can do for you, so when you learn optimization, it has applications in a lot of places like machine learning, as well as places like quadratic control, electrical engineering, and many other fields too. Um, in terms of the way the class is taught, it's taught very differently by different professors, but specifically for the semester I'm in currently, um, oftentimes you have about a problem set every two weeks and then one midterm and one final. So it's relatively light in terms of workload and is also very fun if you enjoy math and programming. So yeah, definitely take this class if you like math and if you wanna go deeper into machine learning or other more mathy fields within CS. Um, so EX149 is our introduction to embedded systems course. Uh, students learn about cyber physical systems, which are digital systems that interact with the real world. 
So these are a lot of the devices you interact with on a daily basis, like cars, IoT, smart devices, like your Google Home, Amazon Alexa, these like show up everywhere. Um, and X149 teaches the fundamentals of modeling, designing, and analyzing these kinds of systems. So the lecture content is like pretty theory heavy and introduces like how you describe these models in like a theoretical sense um, and uh, gives you important skills for that. And in the lab, uh, you learn a lot of low level programming skills and actually get to implement models. Just uh, you like learn the theoretical design behind like on real hardware. Um, so seen in the GIF is our final project for the course where we implemented uh, some complex uh, state machine behavior for this robot to be able to navigate around obstacles. Um, yes, yeah, so the lab content is pretty practical in this sense. And the course also has a large final project component, uh, just like 106A, where you uh, pretty much get to do whatever you want. It's very open-ended and many students will also leave the course with a resume worthy final project that they can also talk about in interviews. I'm gonna talk about X151 now, which focuses on digital design. So what is digital design? Um, you can kind of think about it as designing circuits that takes in ones and zeros, manipulates them with logic gates like ands and ors to, to produce a desired uh, output to make the circuit behave the way you want. So this class teaches like all about that kind of thinking and that kind of analysis. We have weekly problem sets that have designed a lot of these kinds of circuits. So the one on the screen right now is actually the um, logic for a dishwasher. So it decides when you output heat, detergent, um, when you start washing and when you finish. We also spend a good amount of time in this class doing the labs, um, which where you do a lot of the similar things. You design a circuit, but then this time you implement it. So there's actually two lab components associated with this class. There's an FPGA version, and then there's an ASIC version. Won't well, you can find me later if you want to know like more about the differences. But basically, I'm in the FPGA lab. We get sent this little board, and I spend a lot of time staring at these waveforms. Um, we actually implemented a calculator as one of the like more directed portions of the class. And our actually final project, which is our open-ended part of the lab is actually to design like a three-stage RISC-V processor, which is like pretty cool. And in addition, we also have to design a hardware accelerator for convolutional neural nets. So you can just kind of think about as design the hardware to make AI and ML stuff run real fast. And then at the end of it, we have to make all of these circuits, um, again, go really fast and kind of optimize it for that. This class also, is really good for like interviews, all digital design, and a lot of hardware courses ask questions directly from this class. So that's always a plus. If any of that sounded interesting to you, definitely take this class, highly recommend it. Uh, thanks, Jennifer. Uh, last up, we have the image and graphics courses, which are generally well received and concentrate well on uh, image images and graphics. These courses are a bit more variable depending on the semester, but they are definitely interesting too. So first up, we have CS 184, which is presented by Debbie and Gauya. Can you hear me all right? Sorry. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, so if you are interested in games or animations and simulations, uh, if you're interested in how we render all those beautiful scenes in just using code, uh, you should take 184. Right, next slide, please. Um, this class is majorly written in C++ and there are four class projects plus one final project. The one final project is basically by your design and you will implement that by um, whatever resource you can find online. Uh, it really helps you uh, if you want to get a job in Disney or Pixar. Um, this is like the web prerequisite you want to take. All right, next slide, please. So this class will teach you how to use slide or race to um, generate this kind of image. So the first image on the left, you can see this is a 2D image. But if you want them to look more real, you want to make it 3D, then you, you need to use global illumination or ray tracing to uh, represent the shape or the volume uh, of the objects. Next slide, please. Yeah, and also if you want to 
um, represent the surface material of each object, you can use this um, like you can use this direct illumination. Uh, this is kind of like a term that we use in class uh, to represent. Uh, so the middle image is like a glossy surface. You can see and there's a frosted surface. Um, it's just different ways that lights are reflected um, so that we can see, oh, this is a different surface uh, out of like using the lights. All right, next slide, please. Yeah, so yeah, this is a fourth project, a uh, class simulation. So in this project, you get to build a class um, from scratch with springs and point masses and achieve all these uh, fun effects like the class for onto a sphere. And next slide, please. And also like self collisions and like you might want the class to be bumpy and uh, all sorts of interesting um, effects. And uh, I just want to add a last note that this course also gives a nice intro for cameras, lenses, and sensors, and all like the parameters uh, if you're into photography. Um, so definitely take this course if you're interested in like taking photos also. Next slide, please. And here is just a course website link. So if you're interested, feel free to check it out. Okay, thanks. Hi everyone, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about CS194, which is computational photography. So um, uh, just a little context, when, the 194 classes are a series of special topics classes. Um, so they, they don't, they're not really official UC Berkeley courses. They're more just, you know, professors wanna teach a certain topic and then you can take it. But this course is offered pretty much every semester and I believe it is in the process of becoming an official course. Um, and it is probably one of the most fun and interesting courses that I've taken at my experience in Cal. You basically work with real world photographs and do um, cool stuff with them with code to create um, new cool designs. So an example of this um, is uh, uh, all of these projects are, are good examples. So um, the, the, the video is a sort of face morph between um, uh, students in the class. So you basically map key points on faces to each other and you sort of have this sort of smooth facial transition. We also do homography stitching, which you can think of as like sort of panorama stitching. So if you take a bunch of pictures in sort of the same uh, place where like you're only like rotating, um, then you can you can sort of construe the images together um, like it is on the bottom right. Uh, so uh, there's there's a lot of uh, really cool math to learn, and it's very very useful, and just it's really fun to just um, mess around with a bunch of photos and and create really cool things. Um, my favorite uh, my favorite part of this class was the texture transfer and style transfer parts of the project parts of the project where you get to um, basically map uh, faces into different textures. So you can make like Richard Feynman out of like blue tiles, or you can um, you know take two images, one of Starry Night and one of a real world photograph, and then merge them together into some sort of starry uh, starry version of that photo, which as you can see is the Campanile, um, and, and it's super, super starry. So yeah, overall, um, you learn how images are formed and how to analyze, manipulate, and synthesize visual data. But you also learn the math and the implementation behind a lot of algorithms involving edge detection, image blending, um, image straightening, uh, face morphing, and panorama stitching. And yeah, if you guys want to check it out, you can check it out at the link uh, below, which is a CS194 link. Thanks. Hi, I'm going to introduce the class Immersive Computing and Virtual Reality. Um, note that this is a graduate level class, so if you want to take this class as an undergrad, you need to contact the course staff, but um, it's generally not that, not that hard to get in, according to my experience. Um, grad level classes are very rewarding and fun class to take, um, and also a good intro to research areas. Um, so yeah, here I want to showcase part of our group's final project. Um, we built a system to enable frames record. <laughs> Sorry, to enable localization using AR markers for autonomous cars. Um, yeah, can you play the video, please? Oh, is it done? Yep. Oh, can you make it large? This is a demonstration of frames recorded by car-mounted Intel RealSense cameras and a six-degree position output. So yeah, that project is uh, mostly in the realm of um, AR. And um, we also learned about computer vision in this class as used in this application. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? So um, in this application, the chords um, of the musical interface will change based on how many fingers you're holding up. Um, just a side note, the music part is from Music 158A. Um, it's also recommended. You can ask me about it if you're interested. 
Can we play the video, please? I hope that's pretty fun. Um, so can we move to the next slide? Um, so also we have talked about IO devices, sensory input output for um, VR and AR systems, haptic feedbacks, and then image processing and all those HCI, which is human computer interaction stuff as well. So yeah. All right, um, that concludes our courses component of the presentation. We'll now be having an optional q and I'll be opening up breakout rooms in just a sec where we'll field any and all questions you might have. I know that a lot of you have already started asking questions in the chat, but if you also wanna talk to people or um, just ask about anything, you can split out into those rooms. If you're familiar with Zoom, you can join any of the rooms on your own uh, device. Otherwise, you can also message me privately to get connected. We can answer topic specific questions, general questions, or help direct you uh, to any room which might be able to better help you. Um, if you won't be staying around, thank you very much for coming. And I hope that we were able to help you with your course planning or just learning more about uh, CS upper division courses at Cal. We'll keep the rooms open for as long as we can stay. <laughs>